Hey everybody, welcome to a new episode of Data with John. And uh, today we're going to be looking at the um, Likert scale and the Net Promoter Score. Um, all of this um, is relating to, um, you, you know, it comes from the world of products and business, um, but it's actually really applicable to things like behavior changes or um, market-based uh, programming that you're trying to do where you want to get people to you know purchase um, a product that either is a discount or have some other you know health benefits to it or um, anything like that um, so in this case um, we are dealing with if you've been watching this um, series we're dealing with this product called the sato toilet pan um, it's a partnership with unicef and lixel a part of uh, manufacturer of toilet products and it basically improves the experience and safety of a uh, pit latrine by having this nice water uh, seal that keeps flies and odors from getting out and things like that uh, so the idea is that this product is a low cost way to improve the quality of your toilet so you're less likely to regress you know as a household or as a community into open defecation um, so we have a, a survey here. Uh, this is the household survey where we have a pretty standard Likert question. You can see that we've got a question about how likely you are to buy the product in the next year. We're only asking this question to people that have said they've heard of the product. So uh, it's a somewhat limited sample from the, all the households that we surveyed. And we have choices of very likely, somewhat likely, unsure, somewhat unlikely, and very unlikely. Um, some important things about Likert questions to, to notice um, on a Likert scale, you have, um, you know, you try to have equal um, uh, categories uh, so that there's not a big leap between one and the next. Um, and you also try to, um, you know, make them balanced on each side. So you have usually an unsure choice in the middle and then a strong, you know, positive choice and a strong negative choice. You may have seen these as, uh, you know, at, on a, level of a score of one to 10, how likely are you to do something? Um, we tend to ask it in this um, five point scale um, because it's much more easy to translate um, between languages and also people that don't have strong uh, numeracy skills um, still understand what very likely or somewhat likely means in the, in, in the terms of the, of the survey. So um, here's our question, uh, and you may also notice we've got a follow-up question. If they say they are unlikely or very unlikely or unsure, we also are asking them um, why are you not likely to buy one. So we, we like to kind of get some information, and of course, it's always good to have this kind of categorized uh, multi-choice question, but it's also good to have an other response because sometimes you will not think of one of the reasons, and um, you don't want to miss that information. So we have really a uh, well-constructed series of questions here. Um, first, we have a Likert scale, and then we have some uh, you know, follow-up questions. So let's look at visualizing this. So here's our um, dashboard that I've been working on um, to analyze this data. It's inside of a console. Um, we're here in edit mode, and I'm down at my uh, next area here. So um, first, what I'll do is drag in a chart. And I like to put it kind of to the side of something else like this, so it's not too big when you first put it in. Uh, it's a little, you know, a little trick to get it like half size. So we click on our chart, and we're going to make this a bar chart. Everybody knows that's my favorite type. And I'll go to the household survey, and for my horizontal axis, let's go find that question we were just looking at. How likely are you to buy a Sato product in the next year? Okay, so you can see again, you know, most people didn't answer the question. That's why we have this giant bar of none uh, because they hadn't heard of the product, so they weren't asked the question. Um, so we're going to uncheck that to get rid of them. Um, that's nice and, uh, and uh, readable now. Um, often I like to put this in a horizontal format. So you can check this little bar here. And now you have, you know, somewhat kind of a little easier to read. It goes from top to bottom, which kind of makes sense for something that's, you know, from high to low as a scale. Um, so I think that looks nice. Um, for my title, I'm going to put pretty much the question, how likely are you to purchase a Sato product in the next year? 
And notice we included a uh, recall time frame in our question. This is always a good idea. Um, if you just say, will you ever purchase it? It's not as powerful um, you know, of a question as are you going to do it in the next year? Then that, that makes it you know, more of a, a concrete plan and less of a desire. Um, so they may actually, when they answer that question, think, oh yeah, I'm actually planning when the harvest comes in to you know, have some more money and I'll spend it on this, um, for example. So we have a nice uh, graph here going, always put in a axis label. Um, for the horizontal axis, we want to just have number of households. And we don't really need to label this other axis because it's in the title of the chart. And the categories are already labeled. Let's change that color to um, one of my more favorite colors, like this light blue. Uh, matches with the scheme I've got going. Uh, it's always a good idea when you're doing a report to have a consistent color scheme like we have here. Um, and then when you change to some new topic, you might want to change the colors. Um, but it's a lot easier for people to read because they don't go thinking that the colors mean something. Like if this was one color and this was another color, they might think that something has changed that doesn't that I wasn't trying to communicate. Um, so it's a good 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 tip to just kind of you know pick a scheme and stick with it, just like you would do for a website, right? Okay, so um, we have our Likert question uh, graphed here. Now, it might be um, when you have a lot of data like this, sometimes it's hard to decide what to focus on. Do I focus on the really you know, positive people, the very likely people, or is it good that we have you know, somewhat likely as well? You know, does that matter? What do these unsure people really think? Um, and something from the business community that can really help here is uh, called the Net Promoter Score. And uh, this is a nice website you can go to, explains it really well. Um, usually it's, you know, they're, they're basing it here on the one to 10 scale. We have a one to five scale. So you can imagine just joining nine and 10 and seven and eight and so on into uh, those answers that we had. Um, but the concept behind the net promoter score, and there's a lot of evidence from the business world that this actually um, is related to how likely people are to purchase a product or, or to try it out. Um, the idea is that if you are extremely happy with the product, you're what they call a promoter. Um, so if you're that person that just says it's great, I love it and recommends it to everybody, you're probably going to say very likely on our five point question. Then you have the passive people. People say, yeah, I kind of like it. Yes, it's, it's, it's okay. So that's the somewhat likely. Um, then you have neutral. Those are the people that don't really have an opinion one way or the other. And then you have your, um, negatives that are not likely to promote the, the product. Um, and the net promoter score, they group it like this. The promoters are the top level. They call the next rung down the passives. Uh, even though they say they like the product, they're not really strongly supportive of it. They're just kind of, you know, going along with it. Um, and then everybody else is considered a detractor, uh, which is interesting. The neutral people are considered detractors because they, you know, kind of slow the, the, the progress of, you know, trying to, to advertise or get the word out about the product. Um, so in the net promoter score, it's really simple. All you do is take the percentage of people that are promoters, the, the top tier, subtract the percentage of people that are detractors, and we totally ignore the passives. Um, and so you can imagine the score uh, basically, you know, can run from uh, minus 100 to 100 because if the detractors are bigger than the promoters, um, then you could have a negative score. Um, so the ideal net promoter score is something like more than 50%, maybe like 70 or 80 or 90. Um, 90 is really high. Um, that's considered a really positive um, outcome. And you know, anything negative is considered a problem. It means that the business is probably going to shrink instead of grow. So that's Net Promoter. Um, and that can really um, help us here where we just want to kind of get a feel for like, you know, what do these numbers mean? How can I collapse these five different numbers really into one outcome? Um, so what we're going to do here is add another line. Um, and in MWater, you know, you can always add a field. Um, which is a calculation or an expression, as we call it, um, anywhere that you have text. And that's, that's going to be really useful here because I don't really want to graph the net promoter score. It's just a single number, right? It's just a number between minus 100 and plus 100. 
So I'm going to put in here a uh, net promoter score as a label, and then I'm going to insert my field. So you just click on plus field, and that gives you I have a little bleed over thing here, sorry. That gives you um, a data chooser. So we're going to pick the household survey, of course, and then the field. And this is just what's going to be calculated. So let's click on select. And what we need to do here, because the net promoter score is in percentages, um, we can't just get the answer to the question. We need to use a formula. So go over here to the formula tab. And we're going to pick this formula called percent where. Um, <clears throat> Percent where has two parts. The percent where and the select means where something is true. Uh, so the select is going to be a statement that's either true or false, right? And then the of, which is all in, by default, but we're going to want to change that. Um, because right now it's saying all household surveys, but we only want the ones that answered this question. So for the first part, we're going to specify this condition for percent where. So we need to take that question in our select field. Let's go find it. How likely are you to buy the product? Is any of, that's the automatic linking word that mWater adds, which is fine in this case, right? Um, and we'll click select again. And remember, net promoter score says the promoters are only the very likely people at the top of the rung. So we're going to say only very likely, OK. And then, like I said earlier, we have to deal with this all because we don't want all. We only want the people that answered the survey question that we're asking here. So what we can do is go into all, click on the all and change it to something else. In this case, we want to go back to the question we just looked at. How likely are you to buy the product? And instead of picking from the select menu here, we're actually going to change this linking word to is not blank. So all that's saying is that the instead of the all, we're going to say percent of the people that it answered this question. That's what is not blank means. Um, again, we can always pick uh, you know from these choices for our percentages um, because it's a percent formula. And water automatically knows its percentages, so we can just pick that number right there. Um, Okay, so we've got the first part of our statement. Remember, net promoter score is the promoters minus the detractors, right? So now we need the second part, the detractors. So we'll go back here, and whenever you mouse over an expression at the bottom of the expression, you'll see these operators appear. Uh, this is just plus, minus, multiply, and divide. Um, in this case, we want to subtract the detractors, right? So we're going to click on minus. And mWater put in these brackets. That means that these are connected as part of an expression. So we have this piece right here minus what we're going to add here. So we'll click on select. Again, go back to that same question. You can just type the name if you remember it, but I often just go through the tree like that. Oops. Missed. Oh, and see how I just forgot completely to do percent where, and it took me right back to select. It said, you can't do that, right? Because the answer to the question was going to be, you know, uh, one of these categories, and my other number that I have is, an, is a number. Uh, you can't subtract a category from a number, so mWater just ignored what I said. Um, so if that happens, always think, you know, was I, was I missing a step? And sure enough, I should have gone to formula and picked percent where again, right? And again, I'll take the select. I'm going to get that question again. Um, how likely are you to buy the product? Is any of, and remember the detractors are all the people that are unsure or unlikely. So this whole bottom uh, three fifths of the, of the scale. So I'll pick all of those. My statement is built here, unsure, unlikely. And then again, I have to deal with this all statement uh, change that by clicking on it to people who answered the question, so it is not blank. Okay, 
so I've got one number minus another number. That is my net promoter score. Let's see what happens. And here we go. So it's 54%. Um, so what it's taken is, um, you know, whatever percentage this was, and we can find that in a moment, um, minus all of this stuff. And 54% uh, is considered a pretty good net promoter score. Um, now, you might have noticed like net promoter is usually about whether you would recommend the product to somebody else. So we're kind of using it in a slightly different way here. Um, we're asking, you know, are you likely to purchase a product? Um, but it still can be really useful even in, even though it's not the, the typical business use case for this. Um, because it takes one of these questions, that has five answers, collapses it into one number, and because that number is greater than zero, um, then you know that means most of the people are net promoters, um, or you know the the people the sample is a net promoter, um, and that means they're likely to recommend the product or to purchase it, um, and that's usually a good sign. Um, so there's our there's our uh, Likert chart with a net promoter score. In the next episode, um, we'll be looking at that. Um, proportion of people that did not like the product or didn't say they were going to purchase it and uh, analyze the reasons why for that.